If you enjoy a good murder mystery, the new Clue Escape game is where it's at. Everything you love about the original Clue game, but with an escape room twist. Join forces with your friends to escape Mr. Body's mansion, then work together to solve the murder. Was it Colonel Mustard in the conservatory with the lead pipe? Mrs. Peacock in the kitchen with the candlestick? You'll have to play to find out. Clue Escape Game. This new one-time solve mystery game is a must-have escape room experience you can bring home for your next game night. Clue is a trademark of Hasbro. The calendar is flipped to October, and that means the MLB postseason is back on TBS. Watch the biggest names and brightest stars in the American League take the field and battle it out for a spot in the World Series. Catch all the jaw-dropping action starting October 11th on TBS. And stay with us all month long as we crown an American League champion. You're not going to want to miss all the slick plays, crazy hits, and clutch performances that make postseason baseball America's greatest pastime. From the ALDS to the ALCS, TBS has you covered this October. The case of a missing Indigenous Alaska woman sparks new questions about other missing and murdered Indigenous women. But when the cops stop looking, a team of local journalists step in to bring the truth to light. That's where ABC's thrilling new drama, Alaska Daily, begins. And where it's headed will have you on the edge of your seat. Starring two-time Oscar winner Hilary Swank, Grace Dove, and Scandal's Jeff Perry, watch Alaska Daily Thursday on ABC and stream next day on Hulu. Now you might ask yourself, why does it matter to me? that rich men in some far-off bunker in Switzerland are taking bribes. As you'll hear in today's episode, it's because this corruption is rooted in a system that uses the beautiful game to perpetuate abuses that go well beyond rich men stealing from other rich men. The 1978 World Cup was played in Argentina, a country ruled by a brutal dictator who saw a chance to use the tournament as a public relations coup. FIFA could have backed out. It didn't. Just as it turned a blind eye to apartheid in South Africa, to torture in Chile, it overlooked the horrors in Argentina, just as it overlooks other horrors today. I'm Connor Powell. This is Episode 8, World Cup of Shame, Part 1. Uneven. Irregular, bumpy. These were the polite words used by soccer commentators to describe the condition of the pitch at the National Stadium in Buenos Aires, Argentina, on June 1, 1978. It was the opening game of the 11th FIFA World Cup. A great deal was at stake for General Jorge Rafael Videla, Argentina's new unelected ruler. He had just staged a brutal coup two years before. Videla he didn't care for soccer himself, but he loved attention. And he knew the importance of image, especially when that image would be broadcast around the world on color TV. He also knew what staging a successful World Cup would mean for him and his ruling military junta. The World Cup was a chance to scrub clean the regime's dirty war and project legitimacy to any doubters. For FIFA and its president, João Havelange, the 1978 World Cup was a chance to flaunt its growing commercial power, like the new massive Coca-Cola sponsorship. If Argentina could provide a well-run tournament, a brightly colored spectacle without any political distractions, and do it on Argentina's dime, FIFA would be happy. It was an unholy alliance rooted in the power of prestige. Both craved it, Videla and FIFA. They knew how well it would pay off. So why, with so much at stake, why was the grass so bumpy, clumpy, downright crappy? Well, it turns out seven weeks before, groundskeepers sprayed the pitch at Argentina's national stadium with salt water from a nearby river. They were new at their jobs and clearly not qualified. The grass turned yellow, withered, and almost died overnight. Good evening to you. In just a few moments' time, the 1978 World Cup will be underway in Argentina. If you were sitting in the stadium or watching the opening ceremony on TV, 
you couldn't really tell. All anyone noticed were the hundreds of local kids dressed in white gymnastic outfits, proudly spelling out Argentina 78, followed by a flock of white doves released into the sky, gracefully soaring up and around an excited, packed stadium. Minutes later, General Videla, dressed in a gray pinstripe suit, his dark, shiny hair slicked back, strode out before the world. Este evento sea realmente. Videla promised the nearly 80,000 fans on hand, and the roughly 600 million more watching on TV, that this World Cup would be a symbol of peace. And it was just the start of the carefully staged, heart-tugging moments that Videla and the ruling military junta had planned. The whole world was watching Argentina in 1978, and Videla and his generals were writing a fairy tale script. And there's only one way a fairy tale script written by thugs who wanted to look like the good guys can end. A home team win. To take the cup and hoist it up in front of the whole world. But can a World Cup tournament be fixed? Would FIFA let them? Would the lords of soccer continue to turn a blind eye to the murder and torture to play along with this fake forced fairy tale? The answer in 1978 is yes. Teresa Israel was accustomed to the provocations, the veiled accusations, the climate of fear. In the years since the military snatched control of Argentina and installed the mustachioed General Jorge Videla as its leader, the 25-year-old human rights lawyer had heard and seen it all. Photos of her from that time show her with these intense eyes. They say to me, I won't back down, even when the threats are real. And in Argentina, the threats were as real as they get. Too many friends had disappeared. Thousands more of her fellow countrymen had gone missing since the generals took over. Imagine one second you're safely asleep in your own bed or just riding the bus to work or walking down the street. And the next second... You feel a jerk on your arm, a punch to your stomach, a scratch at your neck. And before you know it, you're being stuffed in the back of a green Ford Falcon. The security forces always drove the American-made Falcon. And you disappear. On March 8th, 1977, the sun barely up, the threat came to Teresa Israel's door, shouting, banging, and then poof she was gone. The screams of her family, you couldn't hear them over the sound of the Ford Falcon speeding off. March 8th, 1977 was the last time Teresa Israel was seen by her family. It was the last time they knew she was alive. To this day, we haven't been given any answers about where she is. That's Marita Israel, Teresa's sister. As tragic as her story is, Marita and her family are not alone. Some 30,000 Argentinian families have similar tales. 30,000. That was life and death under General Videla's military dictatorship. When a family member was taken, you could knock on doors, you could plead with officials, you could hold out hope. But that's all you could do. And that's what Teresa's family did, all the while wondering, was she being tortured? Was she in pain? Was she even alive? They had heard the rumors of rape and other unspeakably monstrous acts. The few lucky families got a body to bury. Most, like Teresa's, were left in the dark. The secrecy, the not knowing, the refusals to answer. That's how the junta terrorized the families. That's how they terrorized Argentina. And on the eve of the 1978 World Cup, the families of the disappeared faced another blow. The game they loved, the game that had given them a chance to cheer for their nation, was about to provide a banner of legitimacy for the men that had taken their family members away. 
Y entonces, eh, bueno, We lived those days with a lot of anger and resentment, but also with many contradictions. Because as a country, we love soccer. My sister loved soccer. The military regime was basically telling the world there was nothing to see in Argentina, as far as the rumors were concerned. It was safe, secure, and prosperous. The families of the disappeared, of course, knew the terrible truth. Marita Israel knew that if the junta staged a successful World Cup, Videla and his cronies would be praised, and her sister would be forgotten by the world. For the military junta, the World Cup was a remarkable opportunity to turn around a tidal wave of bad press. You know, the bad press that comes when dozens of bloated Argentinian bodies wash up on Uruguay's beaches with signs of trauma that indicate they'd been tossed from an airplane, or the rumors that the military regime was arresting pregnant women, cutting out their babies, and giving the kids to regime loyalists to be raised, and leaving the women to die. In real life, fairy tales should be read with caution. The more magical or improbable, the more disappointing they often turn out to be. No sports fairy tale is darker more repugnant, more monstrous than Argentina competing for its first World Cup on home soil in 1978. There isn't any part of the tale that isn't tainted. And you have to know this because it's the reason I'm telling you about Marita and Teresa and the bloated bodies. There were plenty of clues to the horrific reality inside Argentina and FIFA never wavered from staging the World Cup there. Bigger clues than the clumpy, messy, uneven grass that couldn't be seen on TV. Or the incompetent groundskeepers who only had their job because they were regime loyalists. The British broadcaster ITV referred to the political situation in Argentina ever so cautiously when describing the World Cup's choreographed opening ceremony. 1,700 children are taking part in this display. Their ages range from 13 to 17 and that upper limit is not an accident. With no one of voting age taking part, the emphasis is firmly on the innocence of youth, free from any suggestion of political involvement. Free from the suggestion of political involvement. That phrase was very on brand for Argentina and for FIFA and its corporate partners. The collective blindness to Argentina's brutal military rule was no accident. It was planned in Buenos Aires, and in FIFA's headquarters in Zurich. The plan was to obscure the violent arrests, the torture, the political murders, and the disappeared. So General Jorge Videla could deliver his fairy tale promise, a World Cup of peace. And FIFA, they did what they always do. They kept their focus on the money. A three-man military junta has taken over the government of Argentina. All eyes in the room were on them and they knew it. If there was any regret or second thoughts, they weren't showing it. Why would they? General Jorge Videla, Admiral Emilio Macera, and General Orlando Agusti had known for months what had to be done. She was weak after all, unfit to lead the country. Argentina deserved better than little Isabelita, the nickname given to President Isabel Perón. The plotters laughed. No one in her own government even bothered to lift a finger to help her. The country was begging for the military to end the chaos. On the morning of March 24, 1976, 10 hours after their troops arrested President Perón, Argentina's generals were plotting a new way forward. The economy was in shambles. The price of basic goods, bread, coffee, meat, was up more than 300% from the previous year. Argentina's massive ballooning debt only made things worse. These were men of action. They saw themselves as Christian soldiers, the new protectors of the Western world. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Do you get stuck focusing on the problems in your life instead of solutions? For me, it's always worrying about, how am I gonna finish all the things I need to do today? Like many people, I can get hung up worrying about my to-do list. But what if there's a better way to approach the things that stress you out? 
It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals no matter how big or small they are. If you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's really easy. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time. There aren't many things this helpful that are so easy. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash soccer today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash soccer. We know you enjoy listening to podcasts. I mean, you're here, aren't you? But what else do you enjoy? Murder mysteries? Escape rooms? Game nights? If you're fanatically shaking your head yes, then you have to check out the new Clue Escape game. Yes, Clue. Like what you've played and loved as a kid and probably still have in your game closet today, but with a cool new escape room twist. The new Clue Escape game has the rooms, the weapons, and the characters you love. Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum, Colonel Mustard, and more. The game starts out as an innocent evening at Mr. Body's mansion, but then quickly turns into a whodunit. You have to crack puzzles, gather clues, and escape the mansion before the police arrive. Then, join forces with the other players to figure out who killed Mr. Body, where they did it, and with what weapon. This new one-time solve mystery game is a must-have escape room experience you can bring home for your next game night. So buy the Clue Escape game now. Clue is a trademark of Hasbro. Imagine you finally buy the house of your dreams in the suburbs of New Jersey and get to move there with your two kids. It should be everything you dreamed of. When suddenly, right after you move in, you receive a mysterious letter that says, Dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. Do you know the history of the house? I've been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. This message will not be the last. I am the watcher. 657 Boulevard is my obsession. And now you are too. Believe it or not, this is the insane story of The Watcher, the new Netflix show from Ryan Murphy and Netflix. Naomi Watts and Bobby Cannavale play the married couple who have finally achieved their dream of buying a beautiful family home in New Jersey, sold to them by realtor Karen Calhoun, played by Jennifer Coolidge. Their dream soon becomes a nightmare as each new letter from The Watcher arrives. Will they find out who's behind the letters or be driven out of their home? October 13th, only on Netflix. First, Videla ordered all political activity immediately stopped. Congress was dismissed. Then the arrest came. They went after the subversives, the communists, the leftists, the guerrillas, the journalists, the lawyers, the troublemakers. They snatched them from their homes and from the streets. If they resisted, kill them. They would come to be known as the Disappeared, after General Videla tried in vain to explain away the thousands of missing people. What he said was that the Disappeared are a different entity, neither alive nor dead. They are just disappeared. Then Videla and his junta ordered all the TV and radio broadcasts canceled until further notice, except for one, soccer, the national sport. When someone asked what about today's friendly match against Poland, the answer was, the game goes on. From the very first day, they understood the importance of football for national identity, but also for their own uh, political purposes. The game, the beautiful game, was useful to the junta, so says Professor Rana and Ryan of Tel Aviv University. Argentinians needed a distraction, and there was no greater distraction than soccer. Broadcast the game. That was the command. The generals understood that canceling the broadcast of this uh, game might uh, cost them dearly, so they uh, decided to leave it on. As the generals talked about the day's match, you could see in General Videla's face that he had no interest in the sport. Soccer was dull. 
Maybe no coincidence that his body just wasn't built for the sport. With his long frame and odd gait, he was nicknamed the Pink Panther after the lanky cartoon character. No one dare say it to his face, of course, but they said it. General Videla was skilled at a different game, public relations. Dull as it might be to him, soccer was his nation's passion, its obsession. The priest of his country only wished Argentinians were as loyal to the church as they were to their own soccer clubs. And so General Videla readily agreed with Admiral Macera, who was a soccer fan, that playing the World Cup in their homeland would be a PR coup. Here's British soccer writer Stu Horsfield. Military young to see it as this golden opportunity to promote Argentina, to promote their ethos, to promote their style of governance. You know, and it's a gift to the Argentine political regime. The generals decided on that first day in power that the World Cup, awarded by FIFA years earlier, was a priority. General Videla picked a friend, one of their own, to chair the World Cup organizing committee, a retired general and oil executive, Omar Actis. Actis knew how to get things done, and he'd even played for the Buenos Aires club River on its third team back in the 1940s. He was resolute and loyal, but was he too honest? Admiral Macera and his right-hand man, Captain Carlos Lacoste, seemed to think so. Friction was inevitable. The military junta promised FIFA and its president, João Havelange, the greatest World Cup ever. Despite the dire economic situation in the country, Argentina's generals vowed to spend whatever was needed, even hundreds of millions of dollars. These are the types of promises you make when you don't really care about the consequences, just the results. They were going to build dazzling new stadiums, first-class hotels, modern airports, new highways. Here again, Stu Horsfield. What you get with a strong-arm government is you will get that because they see it as an opportunity to sell to the outside world what they can do and what their ruling party are doing and what they're achieving and how great their country is, how happy their people are, how wealthy their country is. And so for FIFA, it's a, it's a win situation for them. World Cup 78 would be Videla's crowning achievement. And FIFA president, João Havelange, understood the general's goals. With his close working relationship with Brazil's military dictators, Havelange was among the first to congratulate General Videla after taking power. Under his command, FIFA never wavered in its support for staging the tournament in Argentina. The stories of brutality made no difference. They didn't see that as their business. And of course, it, it matches their intention to keep politics out of sport. It was a way of ignoring it. I think that FIFA never took into account such trivial, quote unquote, issues like human rights. In FIFA, they try to uh, cultivate this false image of sports being completely disconnected uh, from uh, politics, and they want to make sure that the show goes on. They didn't particularly do anything about it. They had no sanctions. They didn't try and put any pressure on Argentina to change its ways. They didn't see it as their job to pre pressure the country that was hosting the World Cup. John Sugden and Ron and Ryan paint a picture of FIFA absolutely committed to not seeing what was right in front of their eyes. It's a picture we've seen over and over again, from Stanley Rouse's willful ignorance about South African apartheid to the bizarre spectacle of a game in Chile's Estadio Nacional. For General Videl and his cohorts, FIFA was the perfect partner. Hear no evil, see no evil. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Do you get stuck focusing on the problems in your life instead of solutions? For me, it's always worrying about, how am I gonna finish all the things I need to do today? Like many people, I can get hung up worrying about my to-do list. But what if there's a better way to approach the things that stress you out? It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver 
making it easier to accomplish your goals no matter how big or small they are. If you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's really easy. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time. There aren't many things this helpful that are so easy. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash soccer today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash soccer. We know you enjoy listening to podcasts. I mean, you're here, aren't you? But what else do you enjoy? Murder mysteries? Escape rooms? Game nights? If you're fanatically shaking your head yes, then you have to check out the new Clue Escape game. Yes, Clue. Like what you've played and loved as a kid and probably still have in your game closet today, but with a cool new escape room twist. The new Clue Escape game has the rooms, the weapons, and the characters you love. Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum, Colonel Mustard, and more. The game starts out as an innocent evening at Mr. Body's mansion, but then quickly turns into a whodunit. You have to crack puzzles, gather clues, and escape the mansion before the police arrive. Then join forces with the other players to figure out who killed Mr. Body, where they did it, and with what weapon. This new one-time solve mystery game is a must-have escape room experience you can bring home for your next game night. So buy the Clue Escape game now. Clue is a trademark of Hasbro. Imagine you finally buy the house of your dreams in the suburbs of New Jersey and get to move there with your two kids. It should be everything you dreamed of. When suddenly, right after you move in, you receive a mysterious letter that says, Dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. Do you know the history of the house? I've been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. This message will not be the last. I am the watcher. 657 Boulevard is my obsession. And now you are too. Believe it or not, this is the insane story of The Watcher, the new Netflix show from Ryan Murphy and Netflix. Naomi Watts and Bobby Cannavale play the married couple who have finally achieved their dream of buying a beautiful family home in New Jersey, sold to them by realtor Karen Calhoun, played by Jennifer Coolidge. Their dream soon becomes a nightmare as each new letter from The Watcher arrives. Will they find out who's behind the letters or be driven out of their home? October 13th, only on Netflix. A few months in, General Actus had a reasonable, sober plan. They would dedicate $100 million to World Cup infrastructure. It was a huge number for a country suffering under crushing debt. And General Actus was positive it was all his country could afford. A view backed by none other than Argentina's finance minister, Juan Ailman. But FIFA president Jao Havelange wanted more. FIFA's rainmaker and corporate partner, Adidas boss Horst Dassler, wanted more. A flashier stadium at the beach resort of Mar del Plata. A modern color TV broadcasting system for the tournament. Color images were particularly important to Dassler, who had recently convinced Coca-Cola to join Adidas as a major corporate sponsor for the World Cup. Coca-Cola hadn't paid millions for its iconic red logo to be shown in black and white. General Actus pushed back, and so did Finance Minister Ailman. These projects were too lavish, a waste of public money. They were certain there were more worthy projects for the people of Argentina. General Actus haggled with suppliers, tried to keep costs down. His frugality irritated, angered Admiral Macera and Captain Lacoste, who had a much more flexible sense of money management. They wanted to please FIFA, sure, impress the world? Of course. But what they really wanted to do was line their own pockets. That penny pincher actus was standing in their way. The closed door arguments grew more heated. The lines were drawn. The knives sharpened. General Actus threatened to break ranks, to publicly criticize FIFA for its demands, and to tell the world about the junta's reckless spending. Threats like that? Well, you better believe they had consequences in Argentina. On the morning of August 19th, 1977, Actus was on his way to meet his fellow generals. He was done with the threats, the bureaucratic fights. He was going to speak out. As he left his house, 
A pickup truck with five hooded men in the back pulled up. The assassination took place just a few blocks from a police station, but the security vehicles didn't budge. As General Actus bled out, his assassins dropped paper leaflets declaring the Revolutionary Army of Montenero was responsible for the attack. The military junta was happy to blame the assassination on Marxist rebels. And when the bodies of 30 tortured and badly mutilated Marxists were found on a field outside of Buenos Aires, the junta said it was retribution for the murder of General Actus. But that story's never held up. General Actus' body, riddled with bullets, was barely in the ground when the junta announced Captain Carlos Lacoste would now be the head of the World Cup Planning Commission. Lacoste was described as a man of unbridled ambition. He wasn't going to worry about things like fiscal responsibility. Admiral Massera, Havelange, and Dassler finally had their man in place. Lacoste would later end up a vice president of FIFA and a close associate of Havelange. And he did just what they wanted. He loosened the purse strings. He might as well have been lighting money on fire, money his country didn't have. The spending for the 1978 World Cup went through the roof, costing Argentina an estimated $700 million, about $3 billion in today's dollars. FIFA would get everything it wanted, and more. The stadiums, the airports, the hotels, the highways, and that state-of-the-art color TV broadcasting system. It would cost more, much, much more, than the World Cup held in Spain four years later. For the Junta, the goal had grown beyond worldwide legitimacy. Once the opening ceremony was behind them, the Junta set its eyes on an even bigger prize, victory on the pitch. Victory for Argentina was the only measure of success now. For General Videla, aka the Pink Panther and his cohorts, winning a World Cup on its home soil would prove to the world and the malcontents at home, that the regime was invincible. This was the fairy tale ending they wanted, and they would do anything to get it. And FIFA would continue to look the other way. In our next episode, you'll hear about FIFA's willful blindness as Videla and his henchmen attempt to fix the World Cup final. It's part two of the World Cup of Shame. The Lords of Soccer, How FIFA Stole the Beautiful Game, is an Inside Voices media production in conjunction with iHeartRadio. The series was written and executive produced by Gary Scott and me, Connor Powell. Special thanks to Paige Nichols, who helped produce this episode and conducted interviews in Argentina for us. And thanks to Atia Bowie for voicing our translations. And special thanks to Donna Carney, who produced our interviews in Israel. Logan Heftel and Katie McMurrin provided the sound design with assistance from J.C. Swadek and Jake Bluno. Alec Cowan is our associate producer, and Jeffrey Katz was our story editor. Our fact checker is Alexa O'Brien. And thanks to Miles Gray, who produced this series for iHeartRadio. If you have any comments or questions, please reach out. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Connor M. Powell, and Gary is at Gary Robert Scott. And if you have any stories about FIFA, let us know. If you like what you hear, please give us a shout out at the hashtag Lords of Soccer. You know you'll rest easy on the perfect Casper mattress. But did you know you can pay easy too? A firm offers transparent, flexible, and balanced financing so you can buy now and pay over time. A firm has no late fees with flexible monthly payments as low as 0% APR. Now through October 16th, save 600 bucks off your dream mattress during our Sleeptober sale. Visit Casper.com or a store near you. Exclusions apply. Financing subject to eligibility. Check more at Casper.com slash financing. The case of a missing Indigenous Alaska woman sparks new questions about other missing and murdered Indigenous women. But when the cops stop looking, a team of local journalists step in to bring the truth to light. That's where ABC's thrilling new drama, Alaska Daily, begins. And where it's headed will have you on the edge of your seat. 
starring two-time Oscar winner Hilary Swank, Grace Dove, and Scandal's Jeff Perry. Watch Alaska Daily Thursday on ABC and stream next day on Hulu. What if you could quite literally change the world? You can at Novavax. Novavax is seeking innovators, game changers, and difference makers with a passion for global public health. Explore Novavax.com careers to see if you have what it takes to be Novolutionary.